Well, hello everybody and uh, welcome to our 12th program here on the first initiation in these video commentaries. Uh, you know, I, I realize, and uh, I don't know if this will reach all who have been looking at these, that this material is perhaps uh, not easy unless we have uh, read in the books, the Alice A. Bailey books, because as you may know, what I'm trying to do here is to take what has been written and correlate it with other factors that have been written. But first, we have to have some familiarity with what is being written. So I encourage you to become a deeper a student of the Alice A. Bailey work, of the Tibetans' work, and then uh, programs of this nature, well, I'll say you'll, you'll get a lot more out of them uh, for sure. Um, well, we're on program number 12, and we still <laughs> we still have 11 pages to go in this particular extra references uh, commentary. So I'll just do the best I ha can as I go along. And, uh, well, you know, the whole idea about the first initiation is that so many have taken it and have not realized they have taken it because the memory in the brain cells is just not there for this initiation, maybe even the second, and uh, well, by the time we reach the third initiation, there should be increasing memory of these uh, inner uh, events, but it's not necessarily a uh, foregone uh, conclusion. Uh, so anyway, so many have taken it. Now from Dinah 2 here, we read that uh, this is test testified to by the fact that so many thousands, as I have several times told you, I think he needs to say it several times, have taken the first initiation. Now, um, as a symbol of material need, uh, yeah, let me check this out, because I want to know the page on which it occurs. And it does occur on Raise Initiations, page uh, 571. So, you know, it's good to know where we're going. <coughs> Excuse me, where we've been and where we're going. Now, bread uh, is the symbol of material need. Interesting, the house of bread and uh, the sharing of the things by which uh, people live will be one of the uh, signatures of the New Age. Right now, we have a very inequitable distribution system and this is because of uh, selfishness and egotism and basically just not caring about the other person and that will cease during the decentralizing age of Aquarius when we have the factor of Leo uh, as wonderful a sign as it is and the most human of all signs we're told there is the problem that we may think we're the only one in the world and uh, some kind of inherent uh, narcissism may go with it and an uncaring about others. But that will be overcome, if all goes well, I would say, in the, uh, in the Aquarian Age. Okay. So um, bread, as the symbol of material need, will eventually be controlled by a vast group of initiates of the first initiation. And by the way, uh, these are, um, no, no, okay, pardon my search for the blue bracket, <laughs> okay, but, uh, these are, uh, largely, uh, initiates, uh, on the seventh, uh, seventh ray. Because they do tend to control the material resources of the earth. They are connected with uh, concretion, manifestation, and generally the factor of appearance. So the highest and the lowest will meet, but they always have to have an externalization of that which they find on the subtler planes. So a vast group of initiates of the 
first initiation on the seventh ray, as the symbol of material human need by those whose lives are beginning to be controlled um, by the Christ consciousness, which is the consciousness of the respons of responsibility and service. So when we feel this very strong responsibility towards others, and when we feel that in order to live, we must absolutely serve, then the Christ consciousness is uh, uh, characterizing and uh, beginning to pervade our normal personality consciousness. These initiates exist in their thousands today. Of course, DK has that point of view of the master and can see where they are, probably through the phenomenon of light. And they will be present in their millions by the time the year 2025 arrives. So we have great hope here. And um, even though there is at the present time, 2018, uh, in process, an attack uh, of the counter forces of materialism, the so-called Black Lodge, um, that attack will be overcome, I do believe. And these initiates will be able to step forward and uh, with a degree of fairness, seek to uh, see the world's resources reach those whom it can serve, whom they, uh, the resources can serve. Um, we are told that heights of luxury unimaginable to us were reached in Atlantean days, and it was a time of war between good and evil. Uh, well, there's a lot of luxury, waste, unnecessary accumulation and hoarding going on today, and it's uh, out of fear, you know, preventing those who need resources available from receiving them. That has to end, and in order for the Christ to reappear, a measure of sharing, we're not told how much, but a fair measure of sharing has to appear uh, along with the peace, a reasonable degree, and the house cleaning that is so necessary. Obviously, uh, right behavior is a factor that's very important to the seventh ray types. So, present in their millions. So, we have to clear away the uh, confusion, the noise, the chaos of this present attack, and by 2025, begin to reconstruct, we would say, uh, the methods of distribution. Remember that um, circulation is one of the major themes of Aquarius, and that is accompanied by the seventh ray, and, for, and the seventh ray is also one of those rays for which uh, right circulation is an objective. All this reorientation and unfoldment will be the result of the activity of the seventh ray and of the impact of its radiation upon humanity. What is it? The uh, is it the fifth time, or is it the seventh time? Well, something like that. Either five or seven. Uh, that uh, the cycle of the seventh ray has coincided with the cycle of Aquarius, uh, probably the equinoctial uh, age of twenty-five hundred years. There are other types of ages. Uh, related to the zodiacal signs, and they are of a duration of 25,000 years. So the cycles suggest, infer, imply that things can get better, much better, if we take advantage uh, of the energies offered and uh, eschew selfishness. Hopefully there will be more and more initiates of the second degree and uh, we're told that a major blow against selfishness is struck at that degree. I suppose the overcoming of the lower aspect of Mars, which is uh, directly related to selfishness and rules just about the entire personality with its uh, demands for satisfaction, regardless of what happens to others. Okay. Um, you know, there's some just marvelous uh, comp compilations that uh, 
I'd like to go through for topical study. There's a lot I'd like to do. <laughs> and it's just a question of whether I get to do it, but you'll see what the method is. Uh, <clears throat> read deeply, think deeply, meditate deeply, and then use um, uh, mercury, which has a very deep third ray connected with it, as kind of a lord of memory, and connect the isolated pieces of information into meaningful patterns. You'll be using the second ray too because it is the ray of the divine pattern. It will reveal the archetypes that uh, are found when we use pure reason. Now what's this one about? Uh, slow growth of the monad during the first two initiations. Remember that uh, we have an issue there uh, that uh, at the first degree the monad does influence the soul, but uh, we in the personality don't know it. So that's uh, a problem. But still, it does have its effect, and it begins to influence. We've seen the mental unit, and uh, in general, the lower mind and its ray, and drives us onward onto the path. There's a driving energy to the monad, whatever its ray may be, and the energy of progress onward is a kind of a first ray energy, and the dramatic title, uh, Driving Forward Through Space, is associated with the monad. The first two initiations, oft regarded by humanity as major initiations, are, well, maybe from the theosophical point of view, they seem that way, but DK has corrected that, uh, sharing with us the present hierarchical perspective. These first two initiations are in reality minor initiations from the Syrian point of view because the relation of the man under discipline and in training is only a tendency. A tendency, and of course, can be reneged upon, as we have seen, unfortunately, that a veering off after the second initiation, even that is uh, possible. And as I've said, I wonder how the sponsors and the Christ cannot help but see the danger, and yet uh, a man must be allowed to go forward and prove himself or not. There is only a developing recognition of the Father. You know, coming after the second degree, the monad becomes a factor for consideration, and so does Sanat Kumar, and so does identification, and a slowly growing response to the monad, slowly, plus an unfolding sensitivity to the impact of the will aspect. The will aspect uh, is monadic, but it also is very much emanating from the atomic level, which is the externalization of the will aspect into the spiritual triad from the monad. So um, a slowly growing response to the monad, even though as a conscious factor, it may not be coming in until the third degree. But in the third initiation, these developments are sufficiently present to merit the phrase revelation of the glory and the transfiguration takes place and this was you know enacted for us by the christ i think even more than by the master jesus the christ was already a fifth degree initiate and uh, verging on the sixth degree and i think the power to dramatize these things at will was very strong the uh, initiate jesus was indeed an initiate of the third degree at that time but it is my impression that it was the Christ who enacted, demonstrated the glory of the third initiation. So let's just say that the monad driving uh, the progress, the spiritual progress of the man forward, is a present uh, in an influential way within the egoic lotus from the first initiation on. And Really, it has been uh, the signal of the monad which has called for the creation of the causal body, the egoic lotus, and the uh, calling in of uh, the solar angels to assist uh, because, you know, they're really helping the monad reach deeper and deeper uh, into the 
lower planes, they are acting as a bridge. Now, how all of that happens exactly, okay, that's difficult to say uh, at this point. It happens at the period that we might call the uh, opening of the planetary heart. And uh, we have to remember that uh, individualization signaled uh, a kind of a first degree uh, for our planetary logos, maybe even in the cosmic sense. I'm not sure whether it's cosmic or in that series of seven initiations, but it, it does um, signal an important uh, beginning. And at that time, the monad is active and the heart center is definitely stimulated at the first degree, you know, because it's often called the birth of the Christ in the heart. And our relationship to the love factor and to a growing unselfishness uh, definitely changes. All right, now I may, yes, I've done this one. Oh, they are so familiar, but this is all about, you know, stepping into the spiritual kingdom, a fresh stage of life, beginning to tread the path of holiness. Uh, so <coughs> we are entering the superhuman kingdom. Well, we're certainly not masters and truly superhuman, but we are within that blue circle. And we are, uh, as, a way, as it were, within the periphery of hierarchy, if we have taken the first degree. And it will be a sign, you know, if you are, uh, for the most part, let's just say, if you are a constant student of DK, working with him, serving him as he seeks uh, for his ashram to be served, uh, deriving your nourishment, spiritual nourishment, largely from the uh, DK books, and I want to include the secret doctrine, then it is a signal, one of the signals that you have probably taken the first degree along with your love of your fellow human being and beings and the disciplining of your life to create a greater beauty and the uh, occult studies or spiritual studies of any legitimate kind. Uh, these are all the signals. You know, you can be very intelligent, many people are, but they just uh, have not seen fit to direct their life aspirationally towards the higher of the pairs of opposites, which does begin to uh, show itself uh, once we enter the uh, unfoldment of the love petals. But, uh, you know, it's, it's possible to uh, avoid the implications and deny the presence and even double down on the emphasis of the personality. That is really, uh, in a way, later to be defeated by your dweller and to become a handicap to your fellow human beings, either as a first-rate destroyer of souls, a second-rate deluder of souls, or a third-rate manipulator of souls. So there's always danger, and we have to be aware of it. Uh, we can never entirely relax our point of tension, though we can uh, fittingly uh, relax the mechanism at times in order to uh, recharge it. But then, you know, from Master Moria, we learn that rest is a change of labor. Well, maybe that's kind of a first ray uh, perspective. It's not uh, so much by reducing the point of tension that we rest, but by uh, finding other worthy things to do. Anyway, this has been, this has been discussed above and just a little now. <coughs> Be, you know, basically the reason there are some duplications here is because I tend, when I put them in the Alice Bailey references, to give alternative titles so that the reference becomes easy to find in maybe a few ways. Uh, because, uh, you know, people may forget one key word and another one will work. So, as I say, I do hope that uh, I can get these Alice Bailey references to you, and I trust uh, 
they may be uh, on Makara even now. I'll talk to my colleague who uh, was responsible or agreed to uh, distribute them or put them up. Now here's something about the sacrifice uh, petals opening. Um, the fires of substance, the vitality of the permanent atoms escape from the atomic sphere and add their quota to the great sphere in which they are contained. This is maybe the uh, burning up of the causal body and nothing is lost. That's, uh, that's something we have to understand. Nothing is lost and the permanent atoms of the spiritual triad uh, receive the information stored in the members of the uh, atomic triangle. Let's see, do I have that? Maybe not. Atomic triangle. And um, so I, I guess, uh, how would it go that the atomic uh, permanent atom will receive that which is found in the uh, physical permanent atom. The astral permanent atom will bestow its content on the buddhic permanent atom and the content of the mental unit will be absorbed into the monastic permanent atom. So the fire of mind blends with its emanating source and the central life escapes. This is the uh, we can say the life of the monad uh, previously invested in matter of the higher mental plane, making the egoic lotus with the help of the solar angel. Okay, this is the great liberation. Now, there are a number of liberations, of course. This is probably the fourth degree. Uh, the man in terms of human endeavor, has achieved his goal. Well, uh, he still is a man, as a master of the wisdom. Yes, he is. But this really, this fourth degree, is really a significant uh, liberation from the dense physical body of the planetary logos and solar logos. The lower 18 subplanes, or even the lower 21 subplanes. The lower 21 subplanes are the dense physical body of the solar logos, and we're being liberated into the cosmic ethers. He has passed through the three halls, the hall of ignorance, first three petals, the hall of learning, second three petals, the hall of wisdom, the third three petals or sacrifice petals. Um, you know, and where are we? Hopefully we are at least struggling for steps in the hall of wisdom, which uh, counts uh, everywhere in this universe. Uh, knowledge is is so plentiful there's all kinds of uh, knowledge for which we have no use but any bit of wisdom that comes our way we have use for it if i'm saying well you know what is the uh, <clears throat> what are the objectives of a certain order of lives on pluto at this moment well the knowledge exists but uh, i can't possibly use it so it is not relevant to my spiritual progress, or even to the spiritual progress of humanity right now. So we have to be selective about knowledge. I mean, knowledge, it's not endless, it's not infinite in any universe, nothing is, as far as I can see. But uh, it is available in vast quantities, and only when it's truly, truly relevant or maybe about to become relevant in the not too distant future should we uh give time to its acquisition anyway uh, the man in terms of human endeavor has achieved his goal he's passed through the three halls and in each has transferred that which he gained therein to the content of his consciousness what is the content of his consciousness really well um from the point of view of virtue, it is uh, stored in the egoic lotus. Um, 
from the perspective of memory, uh, it is stored in the members of the <laughs> members of the atomic triangle. And I think uh, atomic atomic triangle. Well, let's call it that. Atomic triangle. A T T R L. And those are the mental unit, the astral permanent atom, and the physical permanent atom. Okay, A T T. Right. He has an ordered sequence developed and opened the petals of the lotus, remembering, of course, that there is overlap. We always seem to have at least a petal behind and a petal ahead, uh, in addition to the petal on which we are working. Uh, open the petals of the lotus, first opening the lower three, which involves a process cover covering a vast period of time. So let's just say, um, for so long, we walk in the Hall of Ignorance, um, millions of years in the Hall of Ignorance, and the other halls are gone through much more rapidly. Remember, probably 700 years for the number 700 symbolic incarnations for the Hall of Ignorance symbolic incarnations, 70, one-tenth of that for the Hall of the Learning, and uh, one-tenth of that, seven, for the Path of Probation, and then come the initiatory incarnations, which are uh, relatively few. Okay, so a vast period of time. In the Hall of Ignorance, then the second series of petals are opened during a period of time covering his participation intelligent in world affairs until he enters the spiritual kingdom at the first initiation. Now, this is really important because you kind of wonder what's going on when those love petals uh, are opening. And this is what's going on. Uh, participation intelligently in world affairs, which implies that in the Hall of Ignorance, the participation is uh, not too intelligent at all. And uh, <coughs> even though the mind does grow, the understanding, per se, is not uh, anything near what it is in the uh, Hall of Learning. And then, um, then we're entering the spiritual kingdom at the first initiation and a final briefer period where in the three higher or inner ring of petals are developed and opened. Now, you know, this, um, how many incarnations between the first degree and the third, it just depends on uh, the degree of diligence and understanding and will applied and sacrifice, of course, um, of the candidate. I mean, you can you can see, well, you can see an almost, I consider just about an impossible step, but uh, an impossible method. But it's possible that there will only be one incarnation between the first and second degree, and um, the second degree, third and fourth, can be taken in the same life. The third and fourth in the same life, the fourth and fifth in the same, same life. In just a couple few incarnations, one could uh, travel the entire way to mastership, but it would require, what would it require? Something that I've never seen, something that's never been written about, uh, as far as I know. You know, I, most of us are not going to make anywhere near that kind of extremely rapid progress, and yet, you know, there can be, between the first and second degree, only one incarnation. And when the second degree is taken, then the third and fourth can be taken too. Initiation, Human and Solar, page 84, 85. And then when the fourth initiation is taken, the fifth can be taken. So conceivably, you know, one could do this all in two incarnations, but uh, having uh, some I suppose tens of incarnations is is rather more likely the way so many of us uh, approach these things as if the time equation 
were not really in our hands, and it is so much. And the responsibility for this time equation is uh, heavy upon us if we really realize it. So sometimes perhaps we shut our minds to just how much we might be able to do if we cared enough, focused enough, sacrificed enough. Um, you know, as I've sometimes said, the great yogi saint of uh, Tibet, known as Mila Repa, he, to me, he seems to have taken or have moved from the second to the fifth degree all in the same incarnation. But then again, you know, that's a speculation. And uh, I think all we can really do in, in these cases is to speculate as intelligently uh, as may be possible and then wait for confirmation when we uh, when the certainty or uncertainty of these matters is brought home to us, as, as it will be with further learning, further meditation, and the advice of the Master. Okay, well, I think we've done this one too, the first steps into the spiritual kingdom, the Hall of Wisdom, the Kingdom of Souls, the Fifth Kingdom, all of that. We have done this. Um, so... We are passing, uh, you know, this has been done. I didn't realize when I was selecting these, because the titles were different, that we would have done so many of them by the time we reached uh, this point. Now, let's see. Uh, accepted discipleship includes the first and second initiation. That One of the things that really interested me was that you can be quite far advanced on the um, path of probationary initiation and still not be an accepted disciple. It has to do with a special relationship with a particular master of the wisdom. And so even a student less advanced might be accepted uh, by the master and therefore, in a way, uh, be on the inner periphery of the ashram uh, sooner than a disciple who has made greater progress but does not have that kind of relationship with the master. But anyway, um, accepted discipleship is not usually coming in exactly at the first degree, but sometime later, in my judgment at least, when the second initiation uh, is in sight. Uh, and, and quite a number of DK students were at that stage. A few were immediate candidates for the second initiation. Some were to take it in a life ahead, and others, one could see, uh, would require a few lives before they took it, but it looked like the second initiation could be uh, envisioned. And they were all accepted disciples. After the groups of nine, uh, the first four groups, really, of, uh, you know, telepathic communicators and trained observers and uh, healers, esoteric healers really, and uh, uh, educators for the New Age. Those groups all had nine, and a political group just had three. It wasn't fully formed, but when those groups of nine, whether formed or forming, were dissolved and a group of 24 uh, was uh, created, then everyone in that group of 24 was considered to be an accepted disciple, uh, even one of which, uh, one of whom, had not taken the first degree. So there are variations in the otherwise quite strict rules. Um, an initiate, technically speaking, is the third degree um, candidate or one who has taken the third degree. We are initiated before, and we are initiate before we are initiated. That is the rule of thumb, and uh, it explains many things. And uh, it uh, shows us the kind of responsibility we have to gain a certain uh, spiritual status or point of tension before the accolade of fire is sent in uh, by the initiator to confirm it. So, anyway, at the third degree, we're no longer technically speaking, an accepted disciple, but we do remain within the master's group, and uh, that until the fourth initiation. So 
if you know we do have third degree initiates still in the master's group and sometimes i wonder even about the fourth initiation as we're told that uh, master dk has five masters in his ashram but then what is his ashram uh, is it somewhat analogous uh, to that of the venetian master who has the third ray ashram and four others under his uh, supervision? And is it so then that Master DK in a way has uh, the two sub three ashram and four others on the second ray line under his supervision and that the masters involved so-called in his ashram are really heads of sub ashrams on the second ray line but are still, um, in a sense, within his ashram, just as Master DK is in the ashram of the uh, the Chohan, who manages the entire uh, second ray group, and that is uh, Master Kutumi. Now, what if we hear the rod of initiation and the first two circle of petals um, at the first and second initiation? Again, we may have done this. Uh, through the action of the rod as wielded at the first two initiations, the two outer circles unfold. The energy of the two is set free, and two sets of force, as embodied in the six petals, are coordinated and become interactive. Now, you know, the rod of initiation at the first degree. It seems to me that it is also active within the love petals because we have to have the unfoldment of the fifth petal to make a true first degree initiate. But we don't know uh, about those first three petals. Maybe there is a reflex action as well, and they are unfolded and unified and become interactive at that first initiation, along with. I would imagine a very full unfoldment of the fourth petal and a complete unfoldment of the fifth petal with progress in the sixth and activity in the seventh. Well, all of these things will be made plain to us when we can see the process uh, directly. And there will, of course, be variations. Everybody is unique. And while there are general rules that uh, relate to all candidates, there will be exceptions to those rules depending upon the kind of development that they have undergone. Anyway, the rule of thumb here is that when the fifth petal is fully unfolded, and it, you know there's a lot going on in that fifth petal, a lot of struggle, until finally we are ready to be a first degree initiate. When that fifth petal is fully unfolded, hmm, just thought of something, um, it's the first degree. Now, remember, before the first degree, astrologically, a lot of Vulcan and a lot of Pluto. Now, I already showed how, considering the love petals to be water petals, the fifth petal is a Scorpio petal, and then starting at Aries, with petal number one, we reach Leo, Aries and Leo. Well, um, Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio, and Vulcan, that other uh, hidden planet operative before the first degree, is closely related to the sun and to Leo. You know, Vulcan is veiled by the sun. And so uh, we can see how toward the end uh, of the fifth petal, a great struggle occurs and the man becomes solidly oriented. Well, <coughs> quite solidly oriented towards the higher of the pairs of opposites towards the soul, towards the fifth principle, towards the fifth kingdom, towards the fifth creative hierarchy. It's all coming in under the number five. Now, you know, if it seems to some of you that I am correlating these things relatively quickly and maybe too quickly to follow, just stop the, stop the program, go back, listen again, keep studying, refine your knowledge of each of the items of information so you're quite sure about them in isolation, and then the attempt to correlate them in this manner will make a lot more sense. That's my hope, you know, that's, that's my hope. We're all 
capable of much more than we think we are. And we just have to have the uh, persistence to pass through the process uh, of preparation. Um, okay, so this we've looked at before through the action of the rod is wielded at the first two initiations, the two outer circles unfold. And we might say uh, as, excuse me, as circles, and not just uh, uh, petals unfolding. Okay, we kind of looked at that. The energy of the two is set free, and this is a new step. This is a new step. And the two sets of fours are coordinated and become interactive. So what's important here? These are new processes uh, reached at a climactic point. And remember, too, that even the synthesis petals immediately surrounding the jewel and the lotus are um, activated at the first and second initiation, not fully unfolded because the bursting open of the three revealing the jewel doesn't occur until right before the uh, fourth initiation. And then maybe we can really call ourselves the diamond soul. You know, even at the third degree, that jewel is not completely revealed. But there is a, a jewel, a diamond, uh, a volcanian kind of construct at the heart of it all, which is really the presence of the monad projected into the uh, egoic lotus. So the stage of petal adjustment succeeds upon that which was earlier called unfoldment and has to do with the simultaneous action of two tiers. So somewhere in my book uh, on the egoic lotus, uh, all this is discussed in the egoic lotus video book. It's not just commentary. There's a lot of, you know, original kind of material in there trying to follow the uh, implications which uh, are set from Master DK or are offered by Master DK. And we were talking about the, the simultaneous uh, activity of a different nature, all in the Egoic Lotus book, I think, uh, beyond unfoldment, where things begin to be interactive within the circle themselves and between the circle of petals. So all of these are technicalities, and the solar angels, they know all about it. I mean, they've been tremendously trained uh, in dealing with the permanent atoms, the atoms of the atomic triangle with the different chakras. They are really experts because they have loads of uh, fifth ray connected with them. They are a combination very much of the second ray and the fifth ray. So uh, we can leave that to them. We don't have to get too much involved in all of this. So if you'll just excuse me for having maybe done a little uh, personal business in the middle of all this business, okay? <laughs> I'm so sorry. You may have had to wait just a little while all this is going on. Uh, but let's just say that there are stages of stimul stimulation or organization, stimulation, unfoldment, <clears throat> um, kind of um, petal adjustment uh, within the petals themselves and the springing open of a group of three petals and then there is as well the interaction of the petal groups which have sprung open. All of these are stages which I think one day we will actually uh, see. <laughs> as we should right now. It's a bit of reasoning. <clears throat> but we can visualize, we can visualize and hopefully understand something. Okay, um, when does the fifth kingdom uh, begin? Okay, during his cycle of close to 2,500 years, I suppose that is the Christ cycle of the Bodhisattva cycle. He's taking on two Bodhisattva cycles in a row, uh, the, the number 25, as in 2500, correlates with the fourth ray and with uh, humanity. 
but the uh, the number of five fifty five hundred five thousand correlates with the second raise. So somehow maybe it's very fitting that the Christ is taking on uh, two bodhisattvic cycles in a row under the second ray, and he has uh, a huge work to do uh, on behalf of humanity. So during his cycle of close to 2,500 years, close to, you know, maybe we're not given all the exact numbers here, you know, uh, some of those are the uh, secrets of initiation, and we are given approximations. Okay, I think we can live with that. A specific number of men, maybe it's already planned, will pass on to the path of initiation. Okay, uh, is this already planned? How many? will pass on to the path of initiation and take at least the first initiation, thus transferring their centers of consciousness out of the purely human into the uh, early stages of the spiritual. Now, remember how these words go, um, something like this, uh, human, spiritual, divine. So, you know, human has to do with the uh, personality per se, uh, spiritual with the soul and uh, with the spiritual triad, and divine uh, has to do with the monad and the logoic plane, where the freed or liberated monad is found. But if you think about it, well, you know, when is the, even the universe as it now exists is a ring past knot. And the one monad, which is an extension of the uh, absolute deity in the post pralayic world or pre-universal world, uh, that, uh, that one monad in cosmos is not really free yet until its boundary of finite perception is broken and is liberated uh, into, again, the perception of itself as absolute infinitude. Uh, uh, what I'm saying here, it's speculative, of course, is that uh, when the absolute deity perceives itself, then that perception is the revelation of absolute infinitude. Now, um, what I'm also saying is that the absolute in its usual condition of absoluteness does not perceive itself or anything. It just is. It just ultimately is. And uh, the arising of self-consciousness, which is the arising of the observer from the absolute, is the very first limitation. Um, the observer is a limitation, the observation is a limitation, and the universe which comes from it is a severe limitation upon the absolute and absolute infinitude. But, okay, you know, I get there into third-ray subjects and, um, you know, very abstract, and you might kind of wonder why I mention that at all, except that uh, I tend to do that, you know, can't quite help it because the implications are there. Anyway, the divine is the being aspect of our nature. And the spiritual has to do with the spiritual triad and the soul. They are relatively states of limitation. Okay. Um, well, I think, you know, we may have... <laughs> I'm running into ones that we've done before, and I say thank goodness because that will speed the process of along the fire of spirit finally when blended with the other two fires right which are well i suppose they are latent fire uh latent fire and uh, active fire active radiatory fire uh, which blending commences at the first initiation uh, in that pranic center particularly at the lower part of the shoulder blades forms a basis of spiritual life or existence well uh, you know spirit is involved even at the first degree and even if we're not terribly uh, aware of it the monad has been involved from the first in the creation of the causal body in the early days uh, on the moon chain and maybe in the previous solar system the uh, animal man of the period uh, invoked called forth inchoately cried for something 
and the monad responded and the solar angels were not there. But the uh, creation of the petals was a gradual process involving that uh, newly made uh, kind of human being and the monad. The solar angel was not there. Uh, maybe it was not yet time for the opening of the planetary heart. Because, you know, these are hearts of fiery love. That's what the solar angels are called. So they're coming into any planetary, uh, what is it? <laughs> it's not a scheme. Is it a scheme? Uh, well, maybe we can call it that, a planetary scheme. Um, the coming in there uh, of the, uh, into the planetary scheme is a well-timed matter. Now, these great cycles, we don't know. Maybe when we get to the stage of the third subplane of the atomic plane, third from the top, we'll have what's called all knowledge, but, you know, it won't really be all knowledge. It'll be all knowledge related to our particular uh, planetary scheme and or maybe even just our planetary chain. I mean, all knowledge would, em would embrace the universe and, we're just a speck when it comes to that. Even the planetary logos is a tiny, tiny projection of the um, of the great uh, one uh, universal monad, the one universal deity. Well, you know, we range far. We range into great speculations, which are cosmological, and we range... Uh, downward towards practical application of all these things. Okay. Right. Now, Sagittarius, I think we mentioned it, it's kind of a penultimate uh, sign regarding initiation, and it's involved with initiations one and two, but also it leads up through vision and expansive understanding uh, to initiation number three. So Sagittarius, or the vision of the accomplishment, always precedes Capricorn, which is the accomplishment itself. I mean, you can dream about a lot of things and see a lot of things and think they're wonderful in Sagittarius. You can even go there, but do you climb the mountain? So, you know, a Sagittarius will take you to the base of the mountain, but it won't necessarily climb it. However, you might shoot your arrow uh, into the intuitive spheres and get a nice response that will show you more and more uh, the best way of climbing the mountain and what you might find at the top. But the real, I, I would say, you know, put the two together, Sagittarius and Capricorn, you have a very uh, good combination for um, achieving elevation. The keynote here from Esoteric Astrology, I Vision, talks about the early stages of initiation. But, you know, when you think about the sixth initiation, which takes you off on one of those seven ways of higher evolution, seven paths, or even nine now, even though we don't know the nature of the other, the final two, not yet, uh, Sagittarius is involved. It's a really uh, explorative sign. It's an outward bound sign. It's a sign that uh, takes you into uh, distant places. And so, uh, you know, Libra is the decision part of the great decision. But Sagittarius is actually making the trip. And since uh, this trip is all within the one about whom naught may be said, which has the zodiac of constellations as its heart within the head center, we can retain the idea of Sagittarius as useful. If we were going beyond uh, our one about whom naught may be said, uh, I don't know what would take the place of Sagittarius and what would be those higher initiations and so forth. We have enough to keep us busy as we head towards the Pleiades, that great cluster uh, which, uh, taken together, may well be the total head center of this great being that we call our local one about whom not may be said. There are a number of them, I think, in my opinion, at the moment, 49 ones about whom not may be said are shown on page 344 of a treatise on cosmic fire and uh, 
each one of these here, each one of these little triangles is, in my view anyway, a one about whom naught may be said. Now, or a uh, unknown, as it were, and there are two orders of beings even above that. Um, and, you know, when you study this chart, I would just say this, don't be fooled by the word solo logos, because uh, solo logos doesn't just mean one sun. It can mean, in this context, a constellation of suns, or it can mean a number of constellations of sun. It's still called, in this chart at least, as far as I can see, a uh, solar logos. Hmm. All right, well, time will tell whether that is correct or not. <clears throat> You know, one simply must, uh, there's no way around it. You have to speculate. I mean, when you're dealing with issues uh, and structures that are semi-speculative for the master himself, as he says, he has not been to those other cosmic planes, but he certainly has the sources and the tremendous intuition to see with accuracy what they are. But when it's like that for him, well, then, it's really speculative for us. And if we can go um, into these speculations with the idea that analogies will hold and the speculations will tell us something as well about the more immediate worlds in which we live, then we have something of real value. Um, first initiation, well, I've said it before, uh, into the fifth kingdom, into the hall of wisdom in a way, uh, onto the path into real discipleship uh, rather than simply probationary discipleship unless you consider only uh, accepted discipleship non-probationary uh, changing into the fifth you know uh, from the four to the five uh, the first initiation is regarded by the masters as signifying admission to the path well it's just absolutely clear isn't it when does the path begin are you on the path or are you simply uh, you know, a probationer uh, seeking entry to the path at some point. Uh, this has to be determined. But the opportunity now to take the first degree, since there will be millions of first degree initiates, he tells us by 2025, that opportunity is very great. So just press on ahead, press on ahead strongly, as if, you know, it really counted now and that. Uh, the, the, the tide is with you and the current is with you and the wave is with you and you can be swept forward through the uh, presented energies uh, to achieve something that might be far beyond your, just your own individual strength. It's called an initiation by humanity because in Lemurian days it was then the first initiation, you know, bringing together almost consciously the etheric and the dense physical, signifying entrance into complete physical control well that's the ideal but you know uh, <laughs> history shows there's a lot of uh, first degree second degree third degree even fourth degree initiates and then and, and who's the judge but that don't seem to be showing that kind of control or at least in uh, whom or with re in relation to whom it is not completed all right well this then uh except for that little uh, telephone call, which I'm just not, if you pardon me, I'm just not going to eliminate that. It's just too much trouble. So uh, it's a little dip down into the mundane world, but uh, okay, uh, it just, otherwise it'll just be days before it can get fixed and maybe even a week or two. So you can benefit, I'm sure. All right, so this is the, um, this is the, end of extra references uh, for the first initiation video commentary. Yes, it worked. And this is number 12. And today is, what day is today? Today, today. Okay. It's the 5th of July. <clears throat> and we're going to be beginning uh, of uh, extra References for the first initiation video. That's for references for the first initiation video commentary. And that will be number 13. And we'll see when that begins. I'm not sure. Okay, friends. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, 
there's a lot to study. It's a lot to correlate and there's a lot to trust. Somehow in you, the intuition is active. It, it lives in its own world of pure reason. It just has to be brought via impression, perhaps via the Antikorana, into your brain consciousness. And then a lot of these uh, higher things uh, related to the invisible worlds will really make sense and you will be able to achieve what is called uh, Buddhi Manas or Manas Buddhi, the blend of the abstract mind and the intuition. And uh, the concrete mind will not be left out of it and the brain consciousness will not be left out of it. Okay, lots of love. See you later. And we'll go on as we can.